In this video, we'll take a look at some different operations that you can perform on the nest in your job. First, let's take a look at the color legend. So on the View tab, I'll select Color Legend. Okay, and this controls how parts and nests are colored in ProNest. Let's look at the fill scheme. This is clickable here. So right now I have the standard fill scheme set, which means all the parts are colored the same way. But if I click this, there's some different options I can choose from here. One is Highlight Part. I'll pick that now. And now the highlighted part in the part list is colored differently on all these nests. So this gives you an easy way to just visually pick out everywhere that this part appears on the nest. Here's a different fill scheme called Part Name. You can pick that one. Uh, now all the parts are colored according to their part name. So this really gives you a way of visually differentiating the parts on the nest as well. All right, there's some other options here as well. You can also fill by priority or reference. Before generating NC code for a nest, it's often convenient to see how the nest will be cut. You can do this in cut simulation mode. So let's do that now. On the home tab, select cut simulation. And in this mode, all of the individual motions that will be included in your NC output will also be included here in the animation. So you can just click play to begin the animation. And all of the rapid motions and the cut motions that will be included in output are shown here in the same sequence that they'll appear in output. Okay, note that you can click anywhere in the sequence to jump to that point. You can also rewind by clicking a previous point in the sequence. All right, and there's a speed slider here, which lets you speed up or slow down the simulation. One final point about cut simulation. We talked about the color legend earlier. If you want to configure the colors used in here, um, you can do that in color legend options. So the traverse color, for instance, can be set here. Okay, and now when you run it, it will use the color you select. Next, we'll talk about measure mode. So in measure mode, you can just select measure on the home tab and then click and drag a measurement line on the nest and the distance will show up in the status bar. There's also a feature in ProNest called Check for Conflicts. So conflicts on the nest can occur for several reasons. Maybe you have parts that overlap each other. So we'll get out of measure mode right now. Okay, suppose I have this part here and it overlaps a neighboring part. Okay, now the part appears red this part is in conflict. So if I were to output this nest right now, I'd have parts that overlap and cut into each other. So you definitely don't want this. Another reason you might have a conflict is that the part does not overlap another part, but it's nested too closely to the other part. So it's in violation of the separation values in your settings. And then another reason might be that the part is overlapping a plate edge. Um, so this will also show up in conflict in ProNest. So with the part in conflict, there's a few indicators you have here that something's wrong. Um, the nest tab shows up in red, and there's also a red status bar button right here as well. So this lets you know that there's a problem and that you need to resolve it. So I'll take this part here. Okay, now the part's no longer in conflict, and the nest does not indicate that there's a conflict anymore. This button here will check all the nests in your job for a conflict. So that's a good step before you create output. You can view or modify the cut sequence for the current nest in cut sequence mode. That's available on the nest tab and select cut sequence. And in this mode, all of the parts are numbered according to the order in which their exterior profiles will be cut. So this is the drop order of the nest, or the order in which the parts will fall out of the table as they're cut. 
Um, you can reorder nests in this mode manually. So just click apart to unsequence it. And then just click again to resequence. You can clear the entire nest sequence this way by clicking clear. If you click recalculate, you can automatically apply a sequence to the entire nest. So in ProNest, there's a lot of different cut sequence settings, and you can fine tune these settings to get the result you're looking for. So I can sequence vertically, horizontally, and change the sort point and so on. These options can be changed, and then you can just apply the new sequence to the selected nest. All right, to give you an example here, right now I have a vertical sequence, so let's look at this one. This is sequencing the nest in sort of a predictable way. So parts next to each other are sequenced together. So one, two, three, four, the sequence moves up to the large part here, uh, number five, and it keeps going. But there's some different options here in the settings. So let's click recalculate again. This time I'm gonna select heat dissipation. All right, so this is a little bit of a different option. Heat dissipation will spread out the sequence. It makes it sort of scattered on the nest. The goal is to lessen heat buildup in a given area. So for thermal or heat generating cut processes, such as plasma, this can be used to keep the workpiece from overheating in a specific area during cutting. All right, so let's apply this now. All right, so the sequence is regenerated, and now you can see the sequence sort of jumps around a lot on the nest. So the first part is down here at the bottom. The next part, number two, is all the way over to the right, and then the sequence returns down to the lower middle section of the plate again for part number three and so on. So this will give you a lot of traverse distance for this nest, but the goal here is to lessen heat buildup. And this is useful especially for thicker materials. All right, we'll exit this mode. Another option we have is called crop. So, so you might have a nest where a lot of the plate is empty and you want to save this for use later on. So I can add a cut line here that will crop off the usable portion of this nest and then create a remnant that I can nest on later. Let's do that now. On the nest tab, select crop and then just click the points where you want to place this cut line. So I can create a crop line in this way. When you're done, just right click Okay, now I've got a cut line that will be included in output. But this cut line looks a little bit jagged. Let's get rid of it. Okay, let's go back into crop mode. This time hold the shift key as you're clicking. And notice that no matter where I click, Pronus will try to keep this line nice and straight. Okay, and now I've got a nice regular cut line here on the nest by holding the shift key. All right, we'll get rid of this one more time. Just a note here, as you're clicking, you can go back by using this backup button or pressing the backspace key. Okay, there's also an option for auto crop. So in Pronest LT, if you wanna do this automatically without clicking, just press auto crop and your crop line is applied automatically.